Hello and welcome back to the Code Circus. Today, we are going to look at how to make our objects that we have put into the screen move around by themselves. And we're gonna use some built-in wizard classes that allow us to create actions. So let's dive into some code. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is our imports. Most of these we've seen before, actually all of these we've seen before. Our viz, our viz fx, our viz connect, our uh, random, just in case we need that. I don't think we really need that this lesson, but I put it in there anyway, just in case. And then our viz shape, which is our class of shapes. <clears throat> so it turns out that our viz um, act is built in and we don't have to import that class it's automatic but we could go through the process and, and do an import for viz act we could do that this is the class that we're going to be using that has all of the actual methods and code that allow us to get our different objects to move across the screen I'm going to also add in some of the things we've added in before, our grabber tool and our uh, vizconnect config, and then a world that I have created called actworld. I'm going to enable the physics, and in actworld I have a piece of that world named in the inspector as floor, so I'm going to call that ground. We did this in the last lesson by uh, using the get child method of the environment that I created and calling it floor and then setting up ground as a, a collide plane so that way something can bounce into it. Now I when I first start doing these I may not add um, collision to all of these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add in a green box. There we go. So if we remember, viz shape is a class and it has a method called add box, and we have certain arguments that we can send, namely the first value, the 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is the length, width, and height of our box. We can send its initial starting position and its color, along with some other things that we might want to send later on, like Euler, which is the orientation, but we'll talk more about that later on and when we do some more complicated motions. The first action that I'm going to use, uh, it's a multi-step process. You first have to create the action. So I'm going to create a variable called spin forever. And I'm going to use the viz act class. And I'm going to call the method spin. So there are several methods that are built in that we can use and this one as you'll see it takes a speed and the duration is going to be uh, this forever so I'm gonna set an X Y and Z that gives me my <coughs> axis that I'm gonna spin on so I'm gonna set the Y to 1 and it's gonna spin on the Y axis then and then I'm going to set the speed to 90. Now, I think the speed goes from 0 to 100. We might want to do some experimentation with that. But it's whatever the coders, when they first created it, decided um, to set it up as. We don't really have any control over that. We're going to look at some other ways in future lessons that we have more control over what does that speed actually mean. And now we're using a built-in constant that is inside of viz that basically says, hey, spin forever. And forever holds the information uh, that we would need to kind of keep it going in an endless loop. So now we created the action. Nothing is going to happen until we assign this action to our object. And in fact, we could assign this action, spin forever, to any object that we have created. 
I'm going to assign it to my box, and I'm going to use a method called add action. Now this is just one of the ways that we can add actions to objects. We're going to focus on this way in this video, and we'll look at some other ways in some other videos. And the action I'm going to add is forever. Now, it will just, as soon as the program starts, that action will automatically be added and executed into our program. Um, let's put the collide box on our box, so that way it has some gravity. And um, I don't think we need to do, make it a grabbable object right now. We'll just kind of actually, you know, we'll we'll put that in just just for fun. Let's put all of our grabbable stuff in. I'm gonna do it by creating my empty list, grabbable objects. I'm going to append the box to the grabbable objects. I could have just put box in there, but sometimes I like to be able to add multiple things to my list. And then I set up my grabber using my get raw tool from VizConnect, and then setting the items to be grabbable objects. So if I wanted to add more objects, I would just do another append statement. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And you can see we have this green box here that is now spinning along the y-axis. Let's go back and try to get it to spin along one of the other axes set that to a zero and we're going to set this to a one and remember if you forget the parameters what we could do is we could just type viz act dot spin and start and it will tell us it goes x y z speed and duration just by putting that parentheses it kind of auto completes what we're looking for so we're going to have it spin now in the x direction Oh, see, now it's having some issues trying to spin, and it looks like it's hopping along the screen. Let's take out our gravity and see what that does. And now we can see that it's spinning along the x-axis. What was happening is that gravity was keeping it from spinning. It was actually ending up kind of like hopping across the screen. So now it is spinning forever in the along the x-axis and then finally let's get it to spin along the z-axis we'll leave the gravity off for now in case it causes a problem and there we go we can see it spin across the z-axis and again i think gravity would cause a problem there it would kind of keep it from rotating all the way around it would kind of fall back over let's try our speed i'm going to set my speed from 90 to let's say 10 and see what that does Ten is pretty slow. Let's try doing a hundred. And we're gonna see what's the biggest number we can put in there. Hundred's a good speed. Let's try doubling it, see if we can put in two hundred. Sometimes with some of these built-in methods, you have to do some experimentation. Looks like it takes two hundred fine. Let's try a thousand. You have to do some experimentation to kind of see what are the limits of the numbers that it can take. Oh wow, it, so it looks like it's going to be able to take any integer value in there, which uh, you may recall that we talked about integers being the value 2 to the 31st is the largest integer we can put in there. I don't know if that's the number we'll be able to put in there, but you can see that its speed will range from 0 up to uh, a pretty big number. I think like it should technically take 30 thousand because that is a big that should fit inside of an integer let's see what happens wow yep it takes 30,000 without a problem uh, so we should be able to go all the way up to 2 to the 31st we'll slow that, that back down to about 100 okay so there's and we're going to make it spin in the y direction so that way we can add gravity back to it and not have it worry about it bouncing on the screen
And it should be grabbable. And there we go. Notice it stops spinning when I grab it. It will not spin in my hand. Let's take it way up at high in the sky, drop it down and see if it keeps spinning. Notice it was spinning in the air as I dropped it though. So it's important to note that if I'm using gravity and it's spinning the air when it drops, it's gonna bounce and it's gonna kinda hit a corner and kinda bounce around the room and may end up kinda wobbling a little bit. Okay, so now we have our first action. Let's go ahead and add another box. We're gonna call it box zero. And I'm gonna make it 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0.3 for its length, width, and height. I'm gonna set its position to five, zero, and six, and I'm gonna make it orange. Let's just see where that is on the screen. There it is over there. See it over there on the right hand side. And what we want to do is we want to make it move. So I'm going to create an action just like I did before. This time it's going to be called fly to a point. I could call it anything I wanted to. I could call it happy bunny movement if I wanted to. But we're going to make it make sense. I'm going to use my viz act class again and the move to method this time. Now the move to method takes um, two arguments that we want to send it to. Actually, it takes a lot of arguments. Um, we're going to focus in on the first two. The first one is position. Uh, and then we're going to look, we're not going to look at the begin. We're going to look at the speed. And uh, that'll be it. So a position and speed. When we put in a parameter that's out of order, we really should write down explicitly um, using the, the default variable. Remember we talked about how to call a method using default variables in uh, our looking at functions in a previous unit. So we should say the position is fine. So we're gonna, where we're gonna go to is negative one comma zero, comma six. But we're not gonna fill in that begin value, but we are gonna put in speed. So I'm gonna type speed equals. So I'm making sure that Python knows this is gonna be assigned to speed when I assign it to that function. And we talked about there are different ways of sending parameters. If you're gonna send them out of order, uh, we need to make sure we use the variable name. Let me close my parentheses. And now I've created the action fly to point. I now need to add it to my box. So I'm going to say box zero dot add action. And I'm going to add in the action. Notice there, are, there is another argument to this add action, which we are going to talk about. It's called pool. Um, we will talk about that in a future video. And I'm going to add in the action fly to point. And we'll add in our box zero dot collide. Okay, so now we added it in. I'm gonna leave it out of, well, we can add it, we can append it. Let's append it as a grabbable object in case we decide we wanna grab it. box zero. There we go. Let's run this and see what we get. It's going to happen right away. And you can see it sliding across the screen. Oh, and it hits the R the green box and then all kinds of crazy things happen. Uh, the box that was green flipped over, but then it was still rotating in the Y axis, but the, it's, it's Y axis, not relative to the space that it's in. So now it's trying to rotate and it doesn't have enough force to rotate along that axis. The other thing that you might have noticed is that the box, orange box, looked like it was kind of hopping on the screen. There, there's a friction there when it was trying to move across the screen because we had gravity on. Let's take a look at that again. 
Watch, it has like a friction. It's it's like bouncing kind of on the screen before it hits that box. Also notice we are now getting a different result. There's a randomness uh, involved to these actions sometimes. We can't predict that it's gonna do exactly the same thing every single time. So let's kind of fix this and make it a little bit smoother. I'm gonna take my collide box um, off of box zero. So that way when it, it doesn't bounce, let's see how that goes. And you can see now it is so much smoother when it is moving across the screen. And part of the reason why it was bouncing before is because it looks like it's positioned a little bit under the ground. So that's kind of why it was bouncing. And now since it doesn't have a collide box, it, it just kind of sits underneath the green box and the green box is just spinning on top of it. Almost as if it wasn't there. Because again, it doesn't have that collision um, shape to it. You could also try a collision mesh instead of a collision box. Remember there's different types of collision shapes and things that we can put on our different objects. It is still smooth. And now it will actually collide with that green box, but not as dramatically because it's not a collision between two things. And the green box kind of just hops up on top of the orange box. So these are interesting things to experiment with how these different objects interact with each other as they move around in our world. That is all I have for you today. I will see you next time.